Good afternoon, everybody. Um, while we're waiting for um, the Lieutenant Governor, perhaps we can we can do some updates on some of the other upcoming events that are happening uh, this month. I know there's a lot going on since it's Earth Month. Um, so you may have some updates in your agencies or your organizations that you're working on. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll just uh, call out a couple of people that may have some updates. Uh, Candice, um, I know you're doing a lot of the, the legwork on the Island Beautification Task Force cleanup. Could you um, share about that upcoming event? Sure. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Austin. Um, so we are set for April 24th, Saturday. Our show time is 6 a.m. Go time is 6.30 a.m. Uh, we have multiple sites. So if you're interested or if you're an agency, of course, you're going to be um, given an area. And so we do have that breakdown. If you need a copy of it, you can go ahead and email me or call me and let me know and I could send that your way. Um, it's a document that's updated every day until the 24th. Um, other than that, agencies normally provide the supplies for the, themselves and their volunteers if they have any community volunteers in their area. And then, of course, we'll have the central, northern, and southern bins out on the day of for all the sites to bring to the main roll-off bins. And then we'll have Mr. Rubbishman um, haul the trash away. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, our graphics have been out on social media as well. But if you'd like to get a copy, you could also contact me. Um, and I think that's it. Great, thank you very much, Candice. And I think um, uh, the latest list that I saw, um, UOG and GCC will be working together, right, Dr. Okada, somewhere there in um, in Manila. So looking forward to, to seeing you out there. Um, and uh, Dr. Okada, do you have happen to have any um, Earth Month activities going on this year? We don't, I don't think we do. Okay, well, we're all doing I'll a cleanup. Up. I mean, there might be something. We're all doing the cleanup, but yeah. other than the normal stuff we do in terms of, um, you know, the collection I of uh, paper, on. you know, the, they get so much. Um, we designate buildings every month to collect, mm -hmm. um, you know, paper and stuff, and so that it's disposed properly. But oh, shit. I'll find out, but I don't think we have anything else besides the cleanup. I'm not okay. getting any audio. Thank here, you, Dr. Folks. O'Connor. Try this again. Okay, we hear you, Mr. Ariola. Um, Trina, if you're around, do you mind if I put you on the spot to help share about the Micronesia Challenge event um, next week that uh, we're helping out with? Yes, sorry, I was trying to unmute. Um, <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Uh, we will be celebrating the Micronesia Challenge on um, April 21st, and I can um, drop into the uh, chat box the registration for people. I think I think I can. Um, uh, and anyway, um, the event is featuring our governor. And it's featuring um, President Panuelo from the um, Federated States of Micronesia, and it looks like we'll also get Governor Torres from the Northern Mariana Islands and both President Whips and um, President Kabua are, they haven't confirmed 100%, but it looks like they will also join us. We'll be looking back to the um, accomplishments and celebrate bright spots from the original uh, challenge was began in 2006 and then kicking off the new Micronesia Challenge 2030, which is embedded in the G3 Thriving Natural Resource Group as um, some of their targets. So I think it'll be very exciting and G3 is helping us to um, produce it. Uh, and I, so um, I'll put in the chat box the link for people to register and everyone is welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trina. And then just some other um, updates around uh, the events that day. Um, there's also going to be a, a, a UN sponsored event early morning Guam time with um, John Kerry and uh, the UN Secretary General uh, Guterres speaking and possibly the, the governor of Hawaii. And I know that the, our partners at Hawaii Green Growth are working hard to get talking points onto um, those speeches with the, the State Department and the, the climate um, negotiators to make sure that the local 2030 Islands Network gets uh, a mention, which means that um, 
Guam will get a mention for our Guam Green Growth work and our membership in that local 2030 Islands Network. So just something um, uh, we'll be tracking that day, hopefully for um, Trina and Melvin's group in, in Sustainable Alliances. And, uh, and Lieutenant Governor um, has joined us. So Lieutenant Governor, we were just doing some other um, uh, April month updates such as the, the cleanup and um, a Micronesia Challenge event um, next Wednesday, but um, I'll let you take over from there. Yeah, no, I'm sorry I was late, uh, team. Um, you know how that is. But uh, I, first of all, I just wanted to thank you for uh, all of the reports that we had at um, the conference. I thought they were pretty uh, effective. And I'm not sure if you realize um, that, um, you know, this effort, although you may not be uh, particularly responsible for items that were in the report. Um, that was the point of all of this. The point is that, um, you know, this really is an opportunity not only to enable action, but to uh, recognize what's happening and to integrate it in, uh, in the big picture way to move things forward. So um, I hope that um, assigning some additional resources your way is going to um, help make um, your roles easier. Uh, and I'm using this really uh, and having the steering house, clearinghouse staff on these initiatives. They're there to make sure that the rest of the government is catching up with the progress that we want to make. And not to think of, not to point um, out to single anybody out, but to be honest with you, one of the ones I think about almost daily when I think about G3 is you, Lola, because I know how busy you are down at Bureau Planning, but I'm thinking to myself, you know, we have a whole department, although they're in a pandemic posture, uh, they, in the big picture, are responsible for addressing poverty, for addressing, you know, all these things. And so um, uh, it, it's kind of like one of my measures about whether or not we're going to succeed in this is whether or not you are getting the support and the expertise and the resources necessary to advance your area. Everybody else, don't get me wrong, um, everybody else's job is important, but they're also either agency heads or they've been, they have a portfolio and they have resources there. Um, and I'm confident things are moved forward, but you know, when we're dealing with poverty and hunger where the entire um, public school system is free lunch, I mean, it's a big, it's a big issue, but, um, but I think that's the, I, I, I don't know if you know this, Lola, but I'm watching your body language a lot uh, when, when I'm doing this. Uh, but also, but to the rest of Vince, Mary and Banji and, um, and Mel and um, Mel, the other Mel, I mean, um, I really, I know you're all busy doing things. Uh, you know, Mary's running big things. Vince, we're about to get infrastructure money. And I think I talk to him every day. But um, you know this stuff is important, and if we're not going to be doing this, then you know sometimes things can get metzalapun very quickly, and uh, so you know I want to make sure that we're moving things forward. So I, I do appreciate that, and I thought that uh, what you did and you saw it in the PDN editorial, uh, it's very clear that you know the, there's impact and the fact that we're going to uh, publish and have a way to measure our progress is. It, that is a change in mindset that the governor and I are looking for in the government. And it's hard uh, because, you know, the, there's a lot of folks that are comfortable in the current situation. But although there's some good stuff, I don't think anybody is happy with the status quo. I, certainly I'm not. Um, and the status quo can't be good if we have a large number of the people on Guam that are uh, living underneath the poverty level. Uh, so, you know, just the big picture, not to go over, I'm just saying thank you very much for keeping engaged, uh, but it also gives a boost to uh, the governor and me and the and um, the island, I think, what we need to be focused on um, our work. So I, I do want to appreciate uh, all of the work and the time really that you're giving us. All right, uh, Sin, I will actually defer to you to push them around, push the agenda around. 
Um, that was good, uh, Lieutenant Governor. That, that still puts us back on track with uh, updates from um, us, the steering committee uh, co-chairs. Uh, for my part, I just want to say uh, thank you so much to everybody who um, participated in the E3 biannual meeting uh, last week. And for those stuck around a little more for the rest of our University of Guam conference on island sustainability, uh, I think we were holding pretty steady at between 120 to over 200 participants at every given time. And we had uh, four hour sessions each day. Um, the notable um, speakers that, that were able to join us were um, uh, like Nicole Yamase, our keynote speaker, who was the first Micronesian and Pacific Islander to go down to the Mariana Trench, uh, the chief scientist of NOAA, Craig McLean. McLean. Uh, we had um, with uh, Governor Tenorio, the Lieutenant Governors of Hawaii, Josh Green, and uh, Virgin Islands, Tregenza Roach. Um, there was uh, President Obama's um, uh, sister and uh, one of the lead people at his foundation, Dr. Maya Satoro. We had President uh, Sarangal Whips Jr. from um, from Palau, and a, a whole bunch of other uh, really dynamic speakers. Uh, Hank Rogers came back, the owner of Tetris, and um, uh, the president of the Blue Planet Alliance, recognizing us for um, Guam's commitment to 100% renewable energy by 2045. Um, so we have lots of great content that um, our team is working on um, editing and, and um, repackaging so that we can. Um, get a lot of good use out of um, all of the great things that were said um, for the next few months. And I also thank uh, the Lieutenant Governor for helping us in partnership with um, PBS. And um, so they're, they're a really great team over there at the studio. Um, and we're also working with them next week on the Micronesia Challenge event to hopefully um, show Guam's leadership in, in and demonstrate Guam's leadership to the Micronesia Challenge and how we could be a, a great partner in all of the regional work at the same time. Um, so thank you again, everybody, for your contributions and the hard work that, that has gone into this since we first launched back in January 2020. Um, this was a great um, marker in time for the, the annual meeting to show all the great progress that everybody is working towards. And so we look forward to, to doing a lot more together and supporting as much as we can from, um, from the G3 core team here at the Center for Island Sustainability. Um, so we, sh we can really demonstrate to the island all the progress we're gonna make uh, before our next biannual meeting in September. Thank you. And I'll, I'll let uh, Lauren uh, take over with some updates and um, just wanted to give a, a preview to the latter part of the agenda, Lieutenant Governor, to talk about um, resources and, and possible resources and strategies for that, that bottom right quadrant of your um, updates from the biannual meeting. Uh, hopefully we can have a little bit of a strategy discussion um, and the, the final part of our meeting on what it's gonna take to achieve a lot more um, before that next meeting in September. Okay, thank you. Lauren? Thank you, Austin. So um, most of my updates are written in the agenda that I sent out to you, um, but I just want to speak on it a little more. So Rita and I are working on finalizing uh, the G3 Action Framework version two, which incorporates everyone's um, updates, uh, updated goals, and um, will indicate which goals were um, removed and which ones were duplicated, or you know, which ones were removed because they were duplicative. So we're we're working on that right now. My goal is to have it complete within the next two weeks, and then we'll send it over to the governor and the tenant governor for their review and approval. Um, and it'll also have all the updates that the steering committee made during the G3 biannual meeting. Uh, next update I wanna share is that the g 3 dashboardguamgovernor link is live. So um, during the launch of the dashboard, we were still using the sort of generic ArcGIS website that they um, gave us, the, the domain title. So now uh, g3-sport.guam.gov um, is live. Rita, would you mind typing that in the chat for everyone? Um, and so the next steps is we're gonna- Oh, uh, Lauren, with, could you, um, would you mind um, resharing? To... Lauren, would you mind resharing your screen or whoever had the oh, agenda sure. up a little bit ago? Thank you. Sure. So, um, 
we will be working with the Office of Technology and ESRI to continue to build out the dashboard. Um, so what that means is um, we're going to get some training um, and just learn a little more about how we could add in other data visualizations to the dashboard and make it really engaging and get the uh, public uh, just more interested in what all our efforts are for. Um, so they see the relevance in their lives. Um, so what I uh, saw as a need from this um, dashboard uh, process is that some of the goals that we have defined um, have metrics that aren't very um, sort of definite. So for instance, 30% marine areas effectively manage, like that's how it's written in the action framework. But um, so that's good. But if there's anything that just says increase marine areas affected or just saying increase or decrease, um, it would be good if we could define by a certain number or a certain percent, something tangible so we know if we're on target. Um, so if we could work on that during this next six months, I think that would put us in a really good shape for the next biannual meeting. Um, and I just wanted to give a quick update on the local 2030 Islands Network report. Some of you had uh, completed a survey just expressing um, you know, your involvement and thoughts of the G3 process so far. And that information is helping to inform this report. They're in the final draft phase. And um, Austin and I were given uh, the final draft to review. It's looking really good. And some things that they're putting in there is uh, that a steering committee is essential for an effective green growth initiative. Um, an action framework is also tremendously helpful and to have biannual meetings and other ways to engage the public and show the public how we are measuring progress with the dashboard. So all of what we're doing is being put in a report that's gonna be shared uh, internationally and it's going to help other areas, other islands um, sort of copy what we are doing, but make it relevant for their region. So that's really awesome. And when it's finished, I'll be sure to share it with all of you. Um, and I just wanted to make sure everyone knew that our steering committee meetings are standing meetings every third Thursday from four to five. And um, some of the working groups have established standing meetings as well. And that's the Sustainable Alliances team. Um, they have bi-weekly meetings on Wednesdays. Uh, the next meeting is April 28th. And Healthy and Prosperous Communities is the last Friday of every month. So. If your um, team has not yet established a standing meeting, um, I'd be happy to work with you to establish that just so um, your teams can uh, continue to report progress and um, have a set time to work on things. So now we need to work on establishing targets for our goals. Okay, that is uh, my update. Anyone have any questions so far? Okay. Just if a question is up, is the uh, sure. is the dashboard live now? Yes, the dashboard is live. To, yeah, so I clicked on it and I'm not able to get it. it says it's not found. Okay. Yeah, same here. Let me see. Okay. Okay. I'll send an update once we figure out what's happened, but it was working earlier at lunchtime. Thank you. So now we're moving into the debrief, right? Um, and uh, I think I did hear from Austin um, that we're gonna try and take a look at uh, each of the five groups identified, uh, you know, some of the things that they want to accomplish, right? Um, over the this next period, is that what we're did I is that what we're going to be looking at on this one, Austin? Or am I wrong? Uh, oh well, that's just that was my personal hope that we could do that today. I'm not sure yeah. if I communicated that to Lauren Clear for the agenda, and if that's all, that's everybody's um, understanding of that today. But if we're prepared to just think back to our 
the reports that each of the, the chairs gave, uh, I know everybody had a, a need. Lauren, what, I mean, what you, do you need to get to the... Yeah, maybe, are, are you able to um, uh, just go one by one uh, briefly so we can take a look at those uh, in the screen share? Sure, I'll pull those up right now. And then the other thing for housekeeping, um, Rob, can you make sure that uh, we bring in Ricky Orsini for the steering committee meetings? Uh, that's one thing I forgot uh, that I'd, uh, we had talked about uh, so she can come in from the policy office. Hey, Mel Wampat, you're on, right? That says it. All right. Anyway, Mel, let's talk later. The, uh, not to throw you a curveball, but the governor of I and I are sort of thinking that maybe we should reverse uh, and maybe this might be a good, we just need to talk about if we decide to uh, go into PI Pacific Island Forum anyway uh, and what the, so anyway, we'll talk about that on the side and see what ramifications they have with the others. Okay, so Lauren, um, I, I, I'm not sure where, I think we're having a, we're not seeing it on screen. While she's doing that, um, I just wanted to uh, quickly say, uh, Lieutenant Governor, congratulations again on your um, award that's behind you on, on the desk for uh, being the one Lieutenant Governor in the entire nation to win that uh, uh, the energy and uh, environmental sustainability reward uh, from all of your, your colleagues there at the National Lieutenant Governors Association. Thank you for nominating me. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say, I was, I was really shocked. <laughs> All right, here we go. So uh, with uh, Mel and uh, Lola's um, uh, needs. So I know we're at the VAPPC, they're looking at that already, right? Um, there's going to be there, uh, they've been targeting some of the minority groups. Um, just so you know, we're noticing that um, uh, I think clear majority, maybe two thirds, uh, just to maybe guesstimate of the positive cases are coming from the Filipino community here. So um, I know that they're doing a lot of indexing to figure out what's going on, but um, unfortunately uh, uh, we had to pause the Johnson and Johnson, uh, but you know, yesterday there was a pretty good uh, turnout at the vaccination effort with the homeless population, but so I see that going on. And then um, the worksite based physical activities policies. You know, there was, uh, I, I think that there was, uh, there was a model that we've seen in the in prior administrations, if I'm not mistaken, I think ever since Joada's time, uh, Guterres time, Camacho's time, and I think Cabo's time, um, there have been, uh, there's been some movement on that. Um, maybe we take a look and see what worked. Am I wrong? I'm, I'm, I think I'm correct, right, Lola? Yeah, so this, this information actually came from uh, Terry Uggen, their group for the Worksite Wellness. And I think a lot of what has been happening is the focus is now on COVID response. So I think now they're kind of getting back into their, their grant activities and wanting to start implementing a wellness. The Gov, going, there is a GovWell wellness program. So I think it's a matter of now trying to, to start getting into that GovGuam wellness because uh, a, a lot of their staff are basically pulled to respond to COVID. Yeah, but it looks like they're stable, gonna be, they're uh, um, pulling out of that posture slowly. Um, the other thing I was going to say is, um, in terms of the zero hunger, and I was talking to Mel Mendiola about this yesterday. You know, uh, when the legislature uh, re, uh, went and um, uh, uh, 
they went back out on the BPT, the business privilege tax, uh, there is $5 million that's been appropriated from the proceeds uh, basically to go to grants to uh, nonprofit organizations or community organizations that, um, that uh, can put food banks uh, or that will respond to food banks. And one of the thoughts I talked about with Mel is perhaps uh, uh, we need to probably work with public health to set that up. That doesn't exist right now, but it also is an opportunity to probably uh, use that to um, get produce uh, from local farmers to push back out there. Um, so I see it as it's a $5 million multi-year effort that's funded um, that is meant to respond to poverty, but I think it also um, might be able to capitalize uh, through purchase of produce, fresh produce, um, some of the activity going on. Um, and just as a, the other thing too, and uh, we'll probably have to talk to um, John Fernandez, but it seems that the agricultural industry on Guam got undercut when um, they stopped wholesale purchasing local produce from the farmers for um, the uh, nutrition at the schools. So unfortunately, maybe big business with Sodexo came into the picture and They've cut out uh, purchases from the local farmers for the school meals. So um, that's a long term thing. But at the very least, there's $5 million on the table to push out to feed people. And uh, maybe a portion of that can go back into some of the agricultural production. Um, and then the other thing is, it looks like uh, Senator Clint Rogel's um, agricultural bills seem to be making, they have some traction down there at the legislature as well. Huh, Mel? Uh, yes, yes. I mean, they haven't all gone completely, you know, without a hitch. There's been, uh, there's some uh, changes and amendments that might need to be made to one of them in particular, which is, I think, the bona fide buyer. The, the most recent one having to do with bona fide uh, certificates for buyers and sellers. Um, but aside from that, things have, have been going. Um, we've provided him with more legislation than he's introduced, so he certainly has his uh, work cut out for him. He has a pipeline of bills to just steadily continue introducing things having to do with agriculture, expanding uh, access to food. Now, Mel, there's also um, in uh, the work that we're doing with the governor, you're also developing uh, basically looks like a, um, a good push uh, through the aid package to try and spur some uh, additional agricultural farming activity, right? To generate yeah. um, additional um, uh, food. Yes, definitely, Lieutenant Governor. There was, um, uh, I touched base with uh, Dr. Shelton uh, a couple of days ago. And so we're incorporating some of the, um, we're in incorporating some of those ideas having to do specifically with aquaculture um, and just to kind of trying to accelerate the movement forward. We did get a, a $200,000 grant from the US EDA uh, for commercial aquaculture um, assessment and planning. Um, having said that, I think if we just really do some things to strengthen the infrastructure of these farmers, including just um, just some improvements over at the farmers co-op and some improve and imp greater facilities, um, we actually just got a letter from the state uh, from the SHPO um, that uh, we're good to go on their side of the house with uh, opening the three green markets, which is um, improving agate, improving Manilao, and building a new site in Sinanya. So we think that all of those things will contribute positively to this by the next uh, reporting time. Great. All right, and just to bookmark, uh, there's a meeting I'm calling for next week that uh, Stephanie Flores and I um, met with uh, some of the Zoamti group, you know, the, um, the uh, folks into the medicinal plants. And I think there might be uh, more opportunity there. Okay, next Thank slide, you. Lauren. All right, so we got the educated, capable, and compassionate island. Um, so Mary, um, I think we can uh, throw some money to, so you know, part of the education uh, stabilization funds um, going on, we're going to launch um, 
of the governor's education assistance and youth empowerment grant program. In fact, uh, I'll get some time with you later to talk about this. Uh, but uh, in particular, one of the program areas we're looking to support is development and enhancement of learning resources. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'm thinking that, um, you know, you might want to take a look at that funding opportunity if that's going to advance what you're thinking here in that first bullet. I know you're talking about developing policy, right? But, um, but uh, why don't you start thinking about that? So the second one, uh, support uh, legislation to encourage sustainable facilities and future infrastructure development. I mean, you've been paving the way on the paving the way on um, on lead. Is this a bit more than lead? Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be lead, but if you can, if there can be some effort to, I mean, catch rainwater to flush toilets, I mean, something simple, anything, if they take, if they're, ta if they're renovating a building, I mean, similar to what we did here, what Trades Academy did is tear up all the, you know, um, the old tiles and stuff. And, you know, we put a mosaic in the bathrooms or, you know, use it for the, the parking lot or something just to, you know, to encourage uh, sustainable construction of some sort, in, include that in there. And, you know, yes, LEED is very expensive, but, you know, why, why not just incorporate LED lighting or something, make, make an effort for it? Because I think, you know, you can't do all of them, but if they start to incorporate different things in different buildings, and we're starting to build on it, um, then, you know, we'll get somewhere as opposed to just the same, um, you know, the same infrastructure that we're currently getting. I mean, we've got to, we've got to incorporate something for the longer term, as opposed to just looking at it based on cost. That sounds good. And in fact, maybe this is a, an intersect where Vince might be able to, uh, to uh, work with that um, on his side of the house. But um, Mel also told me that uh, the, one of the big construction companies um, is uh, meeting with her over at Gita. Um, and they're looking at trying to recover some of the construction debris or the construction materials that are coming off of the big projects and creating products, right? And that's, I would think this is probably in line with that whole change of thinking. So the point is to not only incorporate that into design, but also to maximize the use of the building materials, right? Yeah, so just as an example, many years ago, we had temporary buildings that were here like forever. And so we put out a RFQ to have the buildings removed. And we ended up paying a dollar because the person who ended up bidding on it wanted the material. So instead of them taking it apart and having us, you know, or tearing it down and having us haul it away, they just paid us or we paid them a dollar and they took, you know, because there was no, we can't survey the thing. So that was, I mean, we've done a couple buildings like that. Uh, this is way back when, but I mean, just little things like that, maybe just to change, because, you know, we shouldn't always have to be paying for something that's worth something. Yeah, no, to, to in get. fact, Vince was talking about that with the abandoned vehicle um, collection, and uh, he ran across an article where there had been some components of the vehicles that have become a gold mine um, in some areas. So I think we're taking a look at that kind of stuff too, huh, Vince? That's correct, uh, Lieutenant Governor, and that that has to do with uh, catalytic converters. As a matter of fact, they're they're high in the market for uh, for thieves in in the U.S. Uh, so if if they're they're high in the market, uh, clearly uh, it it should be something that uh, we're definitely looking at here. Well, there's certain metals, precious metals, in there. On that one, Vince, just as a bookmark, maybe we can uh, send that over to Michelle Lastimosa at EPA so she can, since they're funding the abandoned vehicle program, uh, so we can they can take a look at that. All right, then uh, create a data warehouse for data available from, part, uh, from partner members uh, for uh, ease of local relevant information. Yeah, so it seems like we're just trying to get data all over the place everywhere. So there's gotta be a, you know, like a central data warehouse, I mean, that we can extract information from that's available. I mean, that's kind of very long-term, but eventually you know, but all that's, the- um, I, You know, quite frankly, I was 
from day one, I've been thinking about that kind of stuff. So Stephanie, um, you know, take a look at this one. I think that um, that that's sort of in line with some of the thinking we've been uh, at the clearinghouse. Uh, Vanji mentioned that that issue can also uh, be taken up. Uh, they're working on it at the Climate Change Commission with UOG to um, on the prior um, bullet uh, on the uh, sustainable facilities. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Maybe you can, uh, we can intersect that knowledge. All right, technology, technology literacy through professional development training. Uh, this is the time to fund that kind of stuff, Mary. I'm pretty sure yeah. you're uh, thinking about that already. And then community su support for sustainable practices. That really, I think it falls in great line with the um, sustainable curriculum, um, that first one. I think we have some uh, project money to that we can push on that. Okay. Yeah, and I was just All gonna right. put something in the I was just gonna put something in the chat that says, can we beef up the availability of seedlings at Department of Ag? This will help consider uh, folks considering home gardens because I've heard time and time again that people go there and you can go there and get pallets, but you can't get seedlings. I've not been there, so I don't know. But we used to have, as part of Earth Month, when we were talking earlier, we used to, as part of our Earth Month, we used to get um, or give out trays of, or you know, plants, uh, eggplant, tomato, and stuff to individuals here on campus, or we would sell them for the employees so they can go and start something. And so, you know, onions are easy to grow. I don't buy green onions anymore. That's my only really thriving plant at home. But I mean, little things like that help. But you know, you can't make enough in a Jenny. There's only three of us. But, um, you know, just something, if we can have seedlings available, um, that might be, you know, encouraging for folks to consider doing a little home garden. Hey, Lauren, is this the appropriate uh, portion to bring Kyle in or is that uh, to talk about the, um, um, the uh, outreach support for the G3 Youth Ambassadors or is that uh, at, after the last report? Um, well, Kyle just want to share a few ideas um, that the G3 youth, youth ambassadors have. Um, one of them does pertain to community gardens. So, all right. Um, so, why don't we do now's Kyle, time for Kyle to bring that up? Let's. Uh, we'll run through the the uh, next three slides, and then we're going to go straight to you. Okay. All right. So, can we go to the next next uh, group, Lauren? Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, of course, it's a big thing uh, for the unfunded mandates, uh, but um, but it is important. Actually, maybe the agencies are um, having a second glance at this because they're revising their budgets right now based on you know some of the developments going on. Um, uh, and, go ahead, Vince. No, that's correct. And uh, also, Governor, uh, just last week or earlier this week, a uh, we just got notice of of. Uh, EPA grant funding uh, 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 opportunity uh, that we might be used, uh, be able to use for uh, for MS4. Uh, that that's the major unfunded mandate that, that we're faced with right now. So uh, we just had a meeting on that uh, today. So we're going to explore that. And actually, I'll be meeting with. Uh, uh, she doesn't know yet, but I'll be meeting with Stephanie uh, from from the from uh, the governor's office on how to proceed forward. But there's some funding there, uh, close to about. Um, maybe 600,000 that, that we could start with there. Uh, and also we, we're, we've got some approval from Federal Highways to use some funds as well to help us with MS4. Great. Also, um, there's an additional, uh, we just got a funding, uh, notice of funding opportunity that uh, we should get more information on uh, regarding the RISE Act for transportation. There's transportation okay. projects can be funded. So uh, we just got that uh, early this morning. So we'll be taking a closer look and and getting that over to Vince. Yeah, and Mr. Ariola, one, one more opportunity because I sat in on a call from uh, US EPA. There is the new DIRA. Uh, I can't remember D the Diesel Emissions Reduction Emissions, Act. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah, so this this year they have a uh, a pot of money set aside, I think, for the territories and uh, a better match waiver than they've had in the past. So th that's yeah. something to look at too. I could send you the slides. I took some screenshots if if um, you're interested in applying for sure. that one. 
Yeah, we we particip- we've been participating in that. Uh, I think the issue is uh, was the the ratio of match was was uh, was not so favorable on the Gov Guam side. But uh, if uh, you're correct in that the the, the ratio is going to is changing a bit, so that's good. And we typically use it to to buy four, if not five, school buses. So that's that's good to hear. Great, great. Okay, great. Uh, and then uh, you know, just a note that. Um, there's a mandate for the government side uh, for um, uh, to revise the compensation structure for salaries, but of course, uh, you know the compensation for the private sector, of course, is also a concern, right? With the minimum wage and stuff. But uh, just so you know that there's an active effort uh, looking at, um, and the governor and I talked about the comp- the um, comprehensive um, uh, salary review, uh, beginning with um teachers and nurses uh and law enforcement so there's something going on right now uh, but at least vince in your shop uh your engineering scale is way right. off mark um all right but uh, let's go to the last one the stiffer penalties uh for non-compliance legal dumping and disposal it's a big issue we've been dealing with um not only in the ibtf but uh, we've been uh, really going in looking at solid waste policy um, and uh, that's a, an evolving um, issue as well. So, and, 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 and vice versa, you know, you've got, you have stiffer penalties for noncompliance. Perhaps we should get uh, uh, incentives uh, for, for reusing uh, materials similar to what uh, uh, Dr. Mary Okada was talking about, you know, reusing old, uh, old construction materials uh, similar to what we do. We, we reuse milled material from old roads. When, when we grind it up uh, and, and we mill the old roads to repave, we, we, we turn around and, and we reuse that as well. So there's a lot of things, in, especially in construction that you can reuse. And we're, we're gonna take a look at that, especially old concrete, because concrete doesn't, it, it, it takes a while for concrete to, to degrade. You can always uh, crush that up and, and reuse it. So we've got to look at that as well. Yeah, there's also just as a placehold, um, Austin and the center have been um, exploring uh, some technologies also with plastics in particular that um, uh, turning them to some uh, product that I think probably Vince Wu might be able to use on some of our public facilities. All right, next slide, Lauren. All right, uh, Thriving Natural Resources, Vanji. Of course, funding, 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 right? Uh, and maybe what it is is, um, who do you have, uh, who do we have over there with you and from the clearinghouse? Who's, who's is this, Stephanie? Um, this one is Candice. All right, Candice. All right, well, Candice, uh, you're the insider. So this first bullet, uh, I think uh, you need to uh, be watching this like a hawk, right? Um, but uh, there's a whole bunch of opportunities, I think, in the natural resources area um, in part that we can do the increased monitoring programs. I just tell you this, um, with the stabilization funds coming in, um, the governor and I are looking at um, giving uh, agencies adequate resources on their regulatory and permitting side uh, so they can keep up with um, all these demands with um, the developers, with the military, but really with uh, what we want to be um, positive community development. So um, I think that uh, that there's there's definitely um, um, good stuff here. I would suggest Vanji maybe, Maybe you might want to consider uh, coming up with a questionnaire or some device to uh, maybe pull some target groups that the clearinghouse can help manage for you to try and understand what policies and laws um, we may want to consider on the on uh, fishing and enforcement side, along with the uh, the other natural resource side. I think that might be something that. Uh, if you're not already doing, maybe we can help doing that. Oh, yeah, I think we have a, a, I think that through some of the work that we have, we have identified additional increased policies, what those would be. In terms of funding, what I think is that there's a lot of, of opportunity to 
apply for grants, our concern is um, match. Because typically a lot of the work that we do is funded already from a federal from federal grants. And so we can't necessarily use that for a match. And so maybe Clearinghouse can help us look for the local match for that. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I tell you, when I've been looking at Medicaid, there's been lost opportunities in the past where public health had an opportunity to monetize the locally funded um, uh, staffing, for example, or programs that they could have used for some of the Medicaid funding matches. So there, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, and cool. then um, the, the list of government properties to be restored and conserved, definitely like that. Um, I know a lot of property is, is under the uh, umbrella of Chamorro land trusts or maybe ancestral lands. But I think that we need to, there are some key areas, especially along shorelines that are government properties that need to get into some level of conservation or restoration. And it will also in, also help us with climate change and protecting shorelines in, for sea level rise. Now I'll tell you though that um, prior to the pandemic, the governor uh, articulated in writing a desire to set up a, a local a limestone um, preserve or conservation area. And I know that the folks at Guam Agriculture, um, at least the folks in that division are looking forward to developing a plan. Um, have you heard about that effort? Is that already in your radar, Vanjie? Uh, I think it's the forest system plan. And then that's part of the uh, their forest um, inventory. In addition though, the governor was making a play uh, for some excess lands um, yes. uh, to, on the limestone. There is a conflict though with uh, the, uh, with, or, you know, at least issues that we have to be under, we have to, we have to understand about um, our position supporting ancestral land rights as well. But, uh, you know, there might be opportunities sometimes where the federal government is willing to give us stewardship over some properties um, based on conveyances, right? Um, that they, that um, I think the governor's thinking is to try and get them into the hands of the government of Guam um, so that we can figure out what to do. But uh, I'd say that um, maybe you can connect with Chelsea and maybe Melvin uh, Wampat might um, uh, know about this side. If not, Carlotta does, uh, just to maybe refresh on that and um, see what we can do. Okay. okay. Yes, I but, geez, but we've articulated uh, desire already. And right, actually, maybe uh, Mel Mendiola might be the one because uh, Gita's been sort of focused in on the um, the uh, the excess lands issue. So, okay, next slide. Thank you. All right, Mel Wampat. Or Melvin. Papadi. Sorry, I always get confused when it's the Mel and Mel. <laughs> um, okay, so we, uh, uh, I think the major challenge for us right now really has just been trying to get, uh, you know, get some action on some of the other, um, some of the things that I'm that I'm not personally focusing on, um, a lot of it is really on the regional side. Uh, but you know, the challenge is that there is a lot, there is quite a bit of instab instability, as the LT had explained earlier, with the exit of uh, our Micronesian neighbors out of uh, PIF. Um, but that said, there there have been some other developments, and there are some other things that we are uh, intent on adding into our approach. Um, one of them is the US EPA's recognition of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Um, they specifically are using this for the, um, you know, the to align with Biden's environmental justice platform. Uh, that's also something that we're uh, really trying to put in line with our international approach. Um, you know, obviously the SDG provides us with an additional avenue to discuss decolonization, self-determination at a higher level. Um, but, you know, Biden's platform on social justice also gives us a little bit of parity on the other side, on the federal side. Um, 
some of you probably heard about the recent filing um, at the with the three UN special rapporteurs citing uh, human rights violations in association with the military buildup. Uh, a lot of it really is focused on environmental justice, but one of the important pieces to, uh, uh, other than the consideration of self-determination for the people of Guam is also the recognition of uh, Superfund sites and cleanup of those sites. I thought that this was really uh, very uh, thoughtful and strategic on the part of uh, Protei Latexan and Blue Ocean Law in the sense that um, you know this is this is kind of at the heart of our our uh, sovereignty issues, our lack of self governance, and the ability to make decisions uh, you know for our island for our people. Um, you know, the audit dump is a very uh, prime example of, you know, the way that the federal government is able to, you know, set these impositions on us and, you know, create situations that are, that become, you know, our burden. And so, you know, we're hoping that this will actually give us a little bit of traction, even though that case, you know, has already been decided um, by the Supreme Court. Um, you know, there, there, are, there are a number of pointed inquiries from the UN to the Biden administration. Um, we're also hopeful that this will help uh, ramp up our efforts to, uh, to be included as observers on the compact negotiations. Uh, we are actively working on that one. I've actually been, um, Carlotta Leongro has become my best friend because I need all of this information on the regional side. So. It's been good, you know, CAR has been very cooperative and, you know, really uh, kind of brought me up to speed. And so we're really, we really just have to kind of align these efforts and, and make sure that what we are doing is in step with what um, our front office is already doing on the regional side. Um, other than that, and we Mel, are- by the way, Melvin, um, this is the time and uh, maybe you need a caucus with, um, with uh, Tyrone, but I, I, I'd probably talk to Vanji and Lola just to maybe uh, back in the day when, well, you know, BSP is supposed to be the, the memory card of Gov Guam and they functioned that way excellently for many, many administrations. Uh, and I think we talked about it in a prior call where they were actually key, and you know this, because they they were keeping tabs on every single organization, um, both uh, regional and national and international that we were sending people to, right? I mean, that's the goal is for consistency, uh, which is what is in your bullets. But maybe mm -hmm. I'm, no, you might, I'm not sure if you had a chance to maybe talk offline with Lola and Banji just to um, see what, what uh, that takes, you know? But I know I've mentioned to Tyrone that he should be putting in his supplemental uh, funding request with us um, the body or the resources that can start putting that back together. And um, it almost is a clearinghouse for engagement. And mm -hmm. then on the policy side, you emerge with the Gov and, uh, you know, um, Carlotta and et cetera, to make sure that uh, we reconcile what potential conflicts there might be, right? Because remember, right. I think one of the conversations we had is, you know, you could be coming from another country, but you're hearing people from Guam on things saying conflicting things, right? Right. And yeah, the, yeah this is one of, uh, you know, this is actually the the LT's brainchild is this, the idea of, uh, you know, federal policy clearinghouse, so to speak, and just to try to align, you know, our, our uh, go, a consistent government stance. Um, the, I, obviously this is a ton of research and collaboration required, but it, you know, we, we also, recognize that there it has to go a step further there also has to be a similar approach on the international side because they aren't they aren't necessarily the same thing all the time uh, but uh, you know that then needs to be extended onto the regional approach as well uh, it requires a lot of cooperation and work with you know all, all the branches of government all, a bunch of different agencies um, but we will definitely connect with Guam State uh, with the BSP. We actually have been con uh, been working with uh, Tyrone and Lola on a separate uh, project for the Tomorrow Village around zero waste that we're pretty excited about. Um, 
but uh, yeah, we we've, we've actually been having conversations also about the uh, the strategic approach to the Biden administration and the Secretary of the Interior. Um, you know, we heard that there's a possibility that the gov may be traveling to DC to engage. And so, you know, we're hopeful that we can put together some tangible asks that, uh, you know, will support some of these things moving forward. <clears throat> okay. Oh, just uh, on a side note, there is a, uh, we, we are additionally working on um, the strategy to move the plebiscite forward uh, because of the language in the Biden platform and the rejection of the uh, appeal to the Supreme Court. There's definitely opportunity to have Congress just, you know, authorize the vote. Um, you know, that said, it may be more strategic or favorable for Guam to lead that charge and for us to uh, assert, um, you know, a, an amended bill or a, a new bill uh, around the plebiscite. So there's still definitely a lot of conversation that needs to happen on that, but uh, it's exciting because, you know, for a while the plebiscite kind of felt dead in the water, but I think that uh, you know, there's there's new life being breathed into it in a lot of different ways, and there are quite a number of possibilities for us on that. Thanks, Mel. All right, uh, why don't we bring in Kyle? Um, Buenas and half a day. Uh, thank you for. Hold on. I did ask Lauren if I could share a screen, and I know um, I want to be mindful that um, we want to keep our meetings to about an hour. So I'll keep it short and simple, but I just wanted to share Should with you guys. Should be good to go, Kyle. Sounds good. Um, I think I, I think I'm sharing it right now, if anything. But if I can get a thumbs up from everyone, yeah, I think it's sharing. Okay. So the Guam Green Growth Youth Ambassadors, we met Sunday um, at Infusion, and this was actually at one of our first meetings uh, for us to meet in person and just to get to know uh, people a little bit more. And so we did a t-shirt bag activity. Um, and then we also discussed ways how Guam Green Growth Youth Ambassadors could be um, more of an asset for the Guam Green Growth uh, Initiative, as well as uh, you know uh, increasing our responsibility and um, working uh, with our partners. So for many of you, I don't know if you guys have already uh, seen your Guam Green Growth Youth Ambassadors, but the, here they are. And um, their names are, so you have Nolan from Zonia, Brianna from Sinahanya, Elisa from Digo, Shante from Dedido, um, Mercy from Talampago, and Christiana from, from Maritsu. And so these are the organ, oh, sorry, the, com the committees that they're a part of. And um, from our meeting, I'll keep it short, from our meeting, we did express that we wanted to do more than just um, attend these meetings and sit-ins and listen and, and to provide our, our inputs. Although I do want to preface that sitting into these meetings are very um, helpful. Like I like listening and, and knowing that, you know, there's funding somewhere and there's all these things and activities. Like I don't think I would be able to get that from a PDN or post daily, but, you know, being here and, and listening to it is, it's hopeful. And I don't usually say that a lot, you know, when it comes to government things and like that, but I'm, I'm hopeful. And so um, we had a very long but uh, brief discussion on what are some activities that we want to do. And so um, earlier we did state that um, that we wanted to be part of like that community garden growing. And so I know that there's some uh, difficulties with the Department of Agriculture and their seedlings and, and whatnot. So I don't think that's something that we might be able to do in the short term, but being a part of long-term projects, that's what Guam Green Growth Youth Ambassadors, that's what we envision it to be. Although we, you may see us as providing input from the youth, we want to uh, help in many more ways. And so um, something that's a lot more close is the sign waving events that um, was suggested by Brianna Duenas from the uh, Sustainable Alliances. It's for us to bring awareness. So there are many ways for us to bring awareness is, you know, uh, through writing um, editorial letters, as well as, you know, um, posting posts on our Instagram and Twitters. But um, one other way for us to also bring awareness is through uh, sign waving. And so um, this is being spearheaded or, you know, we're, we're in the talks of it. We want to advocate for the maker space through a sign uh, waving event. And so this could be at ITC or, you know, at a loop or, or somewhat. So, um, the idea is for us to, uh, you know, get together or, or want to do what would a protest be doing, but, you know, instead it's, it's more of like us bringing awareness to 
uh, the makerspace. We don't have all the details yet, but um, we're shooting for May 7 around 5 p.m. on a Friday, but that is uh, contingent on uh, any updates from the makerspace. So we want this to actually be in line with the makerspace and, and when they're going to be unveiling this uh, at Chamorro Village. So we could do this a week before, but we, we would need that information, you know, so that we can work with our mayors and, um, you know, just get, get to get the word out. Look at something in the chat, sorry. Are the G3 Youth Ambassadors active with social media campaigns or G3? Who is doing the social media? Um, I can answer that, no, we are not. Um, I don't have any access to any of those things. I think it's someone else, but we don't have access to social media. And um, uh, Kyle, maybe- Kyle, like, may I just jump in for, for a quick second here? You're good, you're good. Uh, this you're good. is Austin. Um, so I think we're gonna, it's gonna take us a little more time before the soft opening of the makerspace. We're aiming for some time during the summer. Would you consider doing a, you, you know what we do have available right now are our nice SDG blocks. Would you consider doing a wave to start off with awareness of the SDGs? Because that's something yes. we can help with immediately. And then we can do the makerspace as a next step, perhaps. Mm -hmm. That's actually, that was the initial idea. That was a thought bubble, just to bring awareness to the SDGs. I thought that um, we could be a little bit more specific by doing, um, you know, saying uh, the makerspace in general, but something that could be done a little earlier would be for us to do away with the SDG goals. And so that's that, that, that's an opportunity that, um, you know, would probably be a, li a little bit more viable. So, yeah, I see that. Thanks, Kyle. With so to meet with us later and we're, we're, I'll get you all the signage that you need and, and um, support for that. We could do that. And also help with um, integration into um, a social media campaign as well. Thank you for thinking of that. Kyle, I also maybe I have a request that so maybe you can talk to the other youth ambassadors and maybe develop yourself a concept for almost a youth action group um, that could be uh, aligned. And it might be one, uh, it might be you and uh, whoever you recruit, but it doesn't necessarily, uh, I'm thinking it doesn't have to be five separate youth action groups. It could be that uh, you come up with um, activities or projects that may align with you know, any of the groups uh, and you might decide to deploy yourselves for things. So you know, one such deployment obviously would be um, promoting um, and inviting um, interest into the maker space. Uh, another one would be, and this is where I, I think, um, maybe I would ask you to do this. Make contact with Ken Quintaniza, who's online right now and one of the things that um, in um, our conversations with the US Department of Education, they're big, they're in addition to, you know, the learning loss recovery and stabilizing education infrastructure. Um, this is a time where they also want to uh, support and have us fund student engagement or youth engagement programs. So, um, you know, I know that uh, you were thinking about uh, curriculum, right? Um, there's one thing for us to develop curriculum uh, from programs, which we need to, but sometimes um, curriculum uh, developed by people within the target group um, are sometimes even more effective, right? So let's say, um, you know, we have a general messaging campaign about uh, an, an, an item, that, as an example, the maker space, right? That doesn't mean there isn't room or there should be room uh, for really specialized targeted uh, messages or activities focused uh, on, your, on your, um, your group, your age group, or even those younger where, you know, you develop and maybe you might have autonomy to develop um, things that can be supportive or aligned with uh, pro activities that we're covering, any one of the activities. But why don't you talk to Ken and maybe develop or um, think uh, brainstorm ways that we can also use the, these next couple of years to um, activate action from the youth. So that's why my inclination would be, you know, something uh, almost like a youth action group or youth action program um, that, uh, that is a way to harness um, action or change in some cases um, from the youth that are aligned with all the work that we wanna do. You know, and because youth ambassadors 
are on each of the five areas certainly could add value um, to and take it a step further, as you pointed out um, in, in some of the discussions you had earlier. Sounds good. I mean, uh, environmental education is something that I'm very um, passionate about and something that is being driven at the, you know, the, the youth level. And when it comes to environmental education, I'm thinking more of curricula in general, like that should be uh, mandated uh, within our public school systems. And I, I am aware that, you know, it's going to be an uphill battle for um, place-based knowledge and whatnot and all the developments for those things to, to follow through. And I, I thank you for that. I think that um, acknowledging where we are and um, all the many things that um, the Guam Green Growth Youth Ambassadors uh, want to be a part of and, you know, to continue for us to um, include our youth representation uh, in these spaces um, is important. And so I appreciate everyone's um, attendance and, you know, uh, giving us the space for us to, uh, to, to help out as best as we can. Um, I guess that's, I'll be ending it from my end, hopefully. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, or clarifications, you guys could always um, email me. I'll put my email in the, in the chat, but um, so just Masi. All right, thanks, Kyle. And then uh, I know Ken's listening, so why don't you guys exchange um, uh, contact info? All right, uh, so we're at the end of our time. Uh, Lauren, uh, did we dispense with our agenda? Um, well, if we had any updates from the teams, um, team leads, then now's a good time for them to share it. But since we went through all of them, I wonder if all the updates were shared. All right, why don't you stop screen uh, share so we can uh, see everybody. All right, is there anything else that any um, of the team leads wanted to bring up or add? All right, if not, have a... Enjoy your workday tomorrow and have a good weekend. Mm -hmm.